Warning. Sodium hydroxide is corrosive. Potassium permanganate is a strong oxidizing agent. Wear gloves when handling them. Today, I'll be exploring the chemical chameleon demonstration, which is pretty commonly performed in high school chemistry classes. I'm going to break down each step of the process, though, which I haven't seen done online yet. To do this experiment, we'll need three easily obtained chemicals. Sucrose, or table sugar, sodium hydroxide, which can be found as a drain cleaner, and potassium permanganate, which can also be found as a topical antiseptic. I also use distilled water, which isn't shown here. The proportions of chemicals used are pretty arbitrary, and the concentrations will only really change the rate of the reaction. For the first run, I added 4 grams of sodium hydroxide to a beaker labeled A. Then, I added enough sucrose to entirely cover the sodium hydroxide pellets. Again, an exact amount is really not necessary. Then, I added about 125 ml of water and stirred to dissolve. At room temperature, the sucrose and sodium hydroxide would take a little while to dissolve, so I just placed solution A on the side for now. Next, I take out a new beaker labeled B and add about 50 ml of distilled water. To this, I add a couple of milligrams of potassium permanganate and mixed it in. In hindsight, the amount I used here was actually way too much. It ended up being super dark and concentrated, which makes the color change less evident. I noticed this mistake as everything dissolved, so I attempted to dilute it in another 25 ml of water. This didn't really help in the end though. Then, it was about time to add solution A. Upon adding solution A, the mix turns a nice blue-green color. Then, it becomes a darker green, a dark orange, and finally a nice red color. Because this trial really wasn't as nice as I expected it to be with how dark I made the potassium permanganate solution, I tried it again. This time though, I used much less potassium permanganate. Solution B this time was made with no more than a grain of potassium permanganate in about 125 ml of water. This time the color change should be much more prevalent. Once the potassium permanganate was completely dissolved in solution B, I added a freshly made solution to A again. This time, the results were much more pleasing. In this trial, the colors change from a violet, to a blue-green, to a yellow-orange color with visible particulates. To understand why the final color was yellow in this case instead of red, I need to explain the mechanism of this reaction. The chameleon reaction is what is known as a oxidation-reduction reaction, or redox for short. In these reactions, one species gains electrons and is reduced, while the other loses electrons and is oxidized. Think of a reduction as reducing the charge of one species, and oxidation as increasing the charge of the other. In this case, the species being reduced is the potassium permanganate, while the sucrose is being oxidized. This reaction must be carried out under basic conditions, which is where the sodium hydroxide comes into play. Sucrose is not characteristically one of the reducing sugars like glucose or fructose because it's locked in its cyclic structure from an alpha-glycosidic bond. This concept goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video though. Although sucrose is not a so-called reducing sugar, it may still participate in redox reactions. The reactive groups here are the primary alcohol functional groups seen in the sucrose molecules. Primary alcohols are readily oxidized by basic potassium permanganate to form carboxylic acids. Because I find the mechanism for how this happens interesting, I want to go through it here. Note that the squiggly line at the bottom of the alcohol functional group is meant to represent the rest of the sucrose molecule. This reaction could occur at any of the primary alcohol groups. 
First, the lone pair of the alcohol attacks the partially positive manganese in the permanganate ion. This forces one of the double bonds to break and transfer electrons from one of the bonds to one of the oxygens. The resulting intermediate has an oxygen with a positive charge, which is unfavorable. So, one of the negatively charged oxygens associated with the manganese performs a proton transfer to remove the positive charge. What's left is known as the manganate ester, which is also pretty unstable. Because there is a hydrogen associated with the carbon bonded to the oxygen right near an ester, it's relatively acidic. This is what is known as an alpha hydrogen. The hydrogen, shown in blue here, was always present, but was left out in previous steps because drawing it was completely unnecessary. The alpha hydrogen is attacked by the negatively charged oxygen associated with the manganese. The electrons that bonded it to the carbon are donated to form a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen. As this double bond forms, the bond between the oxygen and manganese breaks so oxygen doesn't exceed its octet. What we're left with is an aldehyde and manganic acid. These are both intermediates in these reaction conditions. So first, let's handle the aldehyde. Because this experiment is run in basic condition, there's a bunch of free hydroxide in solution that can attack partially positive carbons and carbonyl compounds. This happens readily with the aldehyde. The pi bond breaks and the electrons are transferred to the oxygen. Then, the oxygen with the negative charge performs a proton transfer with water, regenerating the hydroxide. What's left is known as a gem diol, with the newly added red proton, which will not be around for long. One of the oxygen lone pairs in the gem diol attacks the manganese. Then the reaction proceeds much like the initial reaction with the alcohol in the permanganate ion. This time, there is a hydroxyl group not involved in the reaction, which is colored purple here. We get a carboxylic acid containing the original hydroxide group and more manganic acid. While these organic substituents of sucrose are reacting over and over, potassium permanganate is constantly being consumed. The resulting change of concentration of the permanganate results in the first color change. The violet permanganate is converted to manganate, which causes the green color. This manganate can also be converted to blue-colored hypomanganate, which is the reason a blue-green color is visible initially. The green hydrogen above the plus 5 hypomanganate oxidation state would form in a similar reaction to those discussed previously with the permanganate plus 7 ion, but as a less prevalent side reaction. Therefore, this blue color of the solution is short-lived, if seen at all. At the end, manganese dioxide is ultimately formed, which is brown color. Its formation starts as a colloid, meaning there are many fine particles in suspension. Therefore, we get a yellow color if it's a lower density of particles, and red if it's a higher density. The structures I included here all have hydrogens attached to them, which makes it easy to track how the protons moved in the mechanisms from before. In reality though, these compounds would be entirely deprotonated in the basic conditions and closely associated with either potassium or sodium ions. According to a paper I was loosely following, increasing the concentration of potassium permanganate and or sucrose increased the rate of reaction. A greater increase was seen with an increase in temperature, however, so I decided to test only this factor. So, I added a small amount of potassium permanganate to a beaker, covered it with a watch glass, and allowed it to heat up to boiling. Once near boiling, I added the sucrose hydroxide solution. This time, the reaction occurred much faster, which had a really cool swirling effect in my opinion. Upon stirring, the colloidal manganese dioxide clumped up much faster and became very visible. The cool thing about this experiment is that it can be scaled down to a couple milliliters and taken on the go for quick science demonstrations for interested students. In the first vial, I added less than a grain of potassium permanganate, added some distilled water, and shook it up to dissolve. In the second, I added a few pellets of sodium hydroxide and just enough sucrose to cover them. Then I added some distilled water again and waited for everything to dissolve in the two. Once dissolved, the sucrose hydroxide can be added to the permanganate as normal.
When everything was added, you can see a gradient of purple, blue, green, and yellow form at the top of the vial. This was quite unexpected, and it happens because the hydroxide solution has a higher density than the permanganate one. The banding color was pretty awesome in my opinion. After looking at the cool design for a little bit, I shook it up to form a uniform yellow color. I left the vial out for a few days, and returned to find a bunch of manganese dioxide settled at the bottom. Swirling it around formed a nice little twister thing, which looked kind of cool. Here's a list of some of my upcoming experiments. I hope to tackle some of these pretty soon, so the next video should come out within a couple of weeks. If you'd like to support more science videos like these, I recently created a Patreon, and I'll include a link in the description and on screen. If you donate $1 or more, I'll put your name of choice at the end of each video, and in the description. Donating is always entirely optional, and all of my content will always be visible on this channel for free. As always, thank you for watching.